Good morning and welcome to the Daily Huddle. My name is Sorel Ketan and my business partner and co-host of the Daily Huddle is Giovanni Gonzalez. Giovanni's not here today. He's uh, away dealing with some family matters. And uh, so I'm having this conversation with you today to honor my friend, my business partner, Giovanni Gonzalez, and to let him know that uh, where he is, we are. And where we are, he is. Gio, I love you. This one's for you. So I want to begin with this. This is a creation that our team, our business team, and Giovanni pulled together. And it's about my legacy. It's about your legacy. So I'm inviting you to hear what I'm about to say to you as if I'm speaking directly to you as if I'm beckoning you to embrace what I'm about to say and make it yours. I am 100% responsible for the blueprint required to achieve a better and more sustainable future for the next generation. I hold myself and others accountable to address the global challenges we face I am willing to rock the boat to do whatever it takes to fulfill our legacy. I'll pause and let that sink in with you as I create for you inside of the context question for today. Why this conversation? I say that this conversation exists so that you, me, we unlearn to lead and grow beyond our old truths. You know, the way I was raised, especially being from Haiti, and perhaps the way many of you were raised and the way many of you currently do business because that's what we inherited. There's a traditional framework for leadership that I say finds itself at a crossroads. As a matter of fact, I'm going out on a limb and I'm saying that to lead the way we've always known it is dying. There's an apocalypse happening, and it's an apocalyptic about leadership. There's a radical shift from the conventional chase of material success and competitive dominance to embracing the interconnectedness of life. You know, I said earlier, Gio, you are where I am. I am where you are. There is this kind of interconnection that I'm inviting you to embrace as I quoted this aspect of the core values of mindful performance blueprint and this aspect of the core values that our team embraces. It's a transformational approach that beckons me, that requires us to view leadership this way. I'm saying this morning that leadership is not just about steering organizations toward financial goals, but it's about leading with purpose, the kind of purpose that transcends traditional business metrics, focusing on the well being. I mean, your well being, the well being of your colleagues, the well being of your employees, the well being of the company you're leading, the well-being of the communities you serve, and I dare say the well-being of the planet and all of its inhabitants. So you may be running a show of one, you may be leading a company of thousands, it doesn't matter. This invitation is for you. And what I want to do before I open it up for questions and, and really engage in this conversation with you I want to say three points about what I'm inviting you to consider, which is the death of leadership as you know it. The confronting of the old truths and the ushering in of a new paradigm for what it is to lead and a new paradigm for what it is to be a human being, being on a team. So here's the first point. 
I assert that there is a missing link. Traditional business environments have prioritized profit over people, profit over the community. And that leads to a sort of narrow view, a narrow vision of what it is to lead that overlooks, I say, the broader impact that my decision as a business owner has on the world around me. This value that we pointed to earlier at the beginning that says, I am willing to rock the boat to fulfill this legacy. It's my responsibility to actually create a better space, a better world for the next generation. Now, as a solopreneur, as a business owner of a small to medium sized business, you may be thinking, well, uh, Sorrel, you better say something to my brain right now that tells me my, my business is gonna grow. And I'm telling you that very thought is part of the old paradigm that is dying. There is a breed of leadership you can create for yourself and for your teams that actually is outward focused. You can have your enterprise, you can have your leadership, you can have your being in business as an entrepreneur, be about fulfilling a legacy that is way bigger than you and your business. And watch your business flourish when you give yourself the permission, when you give your business the permission to be led, not by you and your needs, but by promise you make to make this world a better place. So, that's the first thing, the missing link, that we focus more on the outcomes we want from the business than what the business exists to create on the face of the planet. So my invitation to you, pause for a moment and think about your own business. Think about your own enterprise. It may be as small as you're a real estate agent or an insurance agent. It may be as huge as you are the leader of these United States, or you are the leader of the state of Israel, or you are the leader of another country called Haiti. Wherever you are, this focus on what I need to get to survive that's been driving leadership is dead and bankrupt. And here's the actionable advice that I want to leave with you on this point. You can strive to cultivate a culture, whether it's in your country, whether it's in these United States, whether it's in your business, a culture of empathy that recognizes the intrinsic value of your people, of your communities, the communities you serve. And that involves embedding in the very fabric of your company, in the very fabric of who it is you say you are, sustainability, social responsibility as core business strategies, going back to the very beginning quote that opened this conversation. I am 100% responsible for what it takes to create a better world for the next generation. So that's point Aspect one, let's take a look at number two. There is something that Tara Heaton and Catherine Sable would love. It's the power of vulnerability and what I personally call the collective wisdom. Uh, not too long ago, I worked with Tara Heaton and she helped me crystallize uh, this for myself. I say that there's no one smarter than all of us. Everything and anything I need, I can find in what I call the collective. And the collective is you. The collective is everyone else. Now, when you hear the word collective, don't think communism, don't think anything like that. The word collective for me is appropriate to embrace that which I bring to the party 
and that which you bring to the party and recognizing that what I bring to the party is only enough when what I want is really small. So there is this opportunity in the world right now to do away, to kill what I'm calling the old paradigm of leadership, where my achievements, my smarts, what I know alone suffices because I want to appear to be competent. I want to appear to be dominant so that I can get promoted or so that I can make more money. That, that model, consider it dead. There's an impact when as a leader, as a business owner, I don't create room for that kind of vulnerability in the collective. My solutions end up being very narrow and the amount of innovation that's available in my business cannot flourish at all. So as a leader, consider this. What if your job was simply to encourage open dialogue in your organizations? What if your job as the leader of a country, the leader of a large corporation, the leader of a small business was to encourage open dialogue, create the kind of platforms where diverse ideas come into play, create the kind of platform where wherever it is you are, you implement the kind of space where decision-making is something that's done as a group. And when you do that, you'll experience something magical. You'll be tapping into the kind of intelligence that's only available in the collective. So I'm a big fan of doing away with, you know, there's this spot in uh, corporate America that I remember called being an individual contributor. You know, you, you get to be an individual contributor, then you can be a manager, then uh, you can be a director. You know, you get up the ranks. And what often escapes people is that as an individual contributor, there's something I learned, there's something you learned that says, I am not pulling my weight unless I'm contributing individually. Now, I'm not saying don't contribute individually. I'm simply saying that the mindset that that leaves me with as I rise up the ranks often excludes the contribution of others. So in the second aspect of the old model of leadership dying and we deliberately replacing it with something new, I'm inviting you to consider that a strong leader is a vulnerable leader. And I'm inviting you to consider that what you want for your business isn't between your ears. What you want for your business is inside of the conversations you have with others. What you want for your business, whether it's more customers, whether it's growth and revenue, whether it's uh, a more solid operation that produces more profits, what you want for your business is in the conversations you have with others. You know, I remember being in school and uh, I was always fond of looking over my shoulders or looking next to me at uh, the boy or the girl sitting next to me looking at their papers. And man, the teachers always frowned on that. What are you doing? You're copying? <laughs> Guess what? In the new model of leadership, I'm inviting you to consider the person next to you, their ideas. It's not like you're stealing people's ideas, but I'm inviting you to do away with that which is embedded in us that says the only contribution that matters is my individual contribution. I'm being an individual contributor and being really proud of it. No. I'm inviting you today, and that's in honor of Giovanni, 
the way we work is we copy each other. I'm inviting you to find the best, find the people you admire, find the people you love and copy them and let them copy you. There is nothing on the face of this planet that belongs to you and you alone. Look at the, you know, just feel the shirt on your back and pause for a moment and envision the number of hands, the number of hearts, the sweat, and sometimes the blood that went into making the shirt on your back available to you. Consider that running your business is a collective game. I don't care if you're a one woman show or a one man show, find yourself a tribe, find yourself a community and start copying the best. Start mimicking the best. Start integrating into a collective committed to something bigger than just one person. That's point two. Point three, and then I want to open it up so we can have a conversation and I want to hear what you're thinking about the death of leading as we've always known it. So the third point is this. I call it the rise of purpose beyond profit. See, at the heart of this movement that I'm inviting you to uh, embark upon today is a drive to serve, a drive to serve with purpose that goes beyond surviving. And when I say surviving, I mean my own worry about my business generating the right amount of revenue, my own worries about my business generating profit, my own worries about my business surviving. In a world where I have given myself and my business over to the creation of a legacy, that's outward focused, there is the opportunity for my style of leadership to evolve in such a way that I'm looking way beyond my business. I'm looking at the significant challenges that the world is facing today. So I may be an insurance agent or a realtor or uh, a carpenter, whoever I am, here I am, nailing this beam to another piece of wood, building a house. But what's driving me is me addressing a significant challenge that the world is facing today. What if the way you do your job and run your business was for addressing climate change? What if the way you do your job and run your business was for addressing inequality in our society. What if the way you do your job and run your business was for addressing social injustice of any kind? See, when I'm in business simply for my business rather than being connected to a purpose bigger than myself and bigger than the business. There's a risk. The risk is that I and the business become irrelevant, disconnected from the communities we serve. And we miss the opportunity to contribute meaningfully in a way that changes the world and in a way that inspires our employees and our customers. You think people come to work for money? You think people come to work for a raise? No, they do that. They think they come to work for that because that's what the culture's been. No, people come to work to live a fulfilled life. That's the new model of leadership. People come to work for an opportunity to make a dent in the world to make a dent in the universe and you 
as a business owner. Me, as a business owner. We can do that together. So I'm inviting you to redefine your organization's mission. I'm inviting you individually, whether it's just for your family, to relook at why this unit exists and to align yourself to being someone, to being an enterprise that's concerned for the greater challenges facing our society. You can engage yourself, you can engage your employees, you can engage your stakeholders, you can engage your vendors, you can engage anyone that comes within a hundred feet of you in a mission designed to transform your business into a force for positive change that fosters loyalty and drives sustainability across the board. Folks, I got on a soapbox this morning for a very specific reason. Gio and I see it all the time. People who are doing really well, but deep down inside, they're miserable. Because they know and they feel it that their life isn't being spent for something bigger than their own survival. Folks, I'll pause here. I want to hear what this conversation is stimulating where you are. And what do you want to say about the death of leadership as we've known it? The death of leading and the legacy you're willing to embrace. You know, if Gio were here, he'd go like this. I got something to say. <laughs> and he'd say something like this. He'd say, Sorrel, I love my life. I love being someone who's given my life over to creating a new paradigm for being for human beings and the expression of leadership in the world. Chase, good morning. You have the floor. Grand rising, sir. Um, I just want to say something really quick, and that is um, I feel like leadership now is a more sensitive approach. We're in a place where if we don't listen to what people really want and what they really need, then we can't be successful. So when I meet with a client, I do the opposite of what I know the guys before me did because I've seen them in meetings. They put the paper down. They show them what we play, where we've played, how we do it. And then we say, and then they say, okay, what do you want to do inside of that? And what I do is I say, how do you want your party to look? How do you want your party to feel? What kind of music do you like? And I mm. let them do everything they want. And then I say, okay, out of these 10 names, I promise you we'll hit at least five or six of them. And if you want this kind of band, we'll bring it to you. And we won't play these songs. And at no point in the night will we reach out of these areas unless you tell us to do so. And I'm telling you, I've been 90% successful with that uh, way of being. And when people see that you care about them, I meet them in a very upscale place in New York City, not an office. We have a little drink or we have a little bite to eat. We're comfortable. When they see that, they're, they, they go forward in a more uh, fluid way. Mm -hmm. And they leave feeling like they're cared for. That's how I feel like leadership is different now. I don't think, I think we're far, we're moving away from this robotic uh, way of being and everything is technical and here's the contract and here's whatever. I bring a very, very personal uh, flow and a very personal aspect to my clients as if I already know them when I meet them. Mm. That's what I feel the difference is. Yeah, yeah. And I can hear the ring of the collective in what you just said, Chase. It's like your clients aren't separate from you. You're there. 
and they get to draw something out of you, but they can't draw it out of you until they tell you what they want. Correct. Yeah. Exactly right. You're there to serve that need. So the 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 thing about being innovative that uh, that approach creates, in my view, uh, 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 Chase. And I'll ask you this question: Has a client ever asked you, told told you what they want, and out of your commitment to fulfilling their need, something completely new came out of you? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I would tell my people, there's no, no. If you ask me for four mariachi guitar players dressed in black, I'm going to find it for you. Mm -hmm. I will work feverishly to find it for you. I don't have any mariachis in my in my uh, staff, but I will find them. And I don't tell them that on the moment. They say, hey, can you get so and so? And I go, yeah, I think we can get that. I say it yeah. real casually and Maybe then I that. work feverishly to get it. And you know what? Just before I close. I was at a restaurant the other day and I love this particular dish that they had. I love all the ingredients. And all I wanted to do was change the noodle from fettuccine to fusilli so that the sauce gets lodged in the noodles. I learned all this stuff when I was in Italy. So I said to the lady, can I have this? I love this sauce. I want the fusilli noodles. I want the corkscrew to take in all the flavor. She goes, I don't think that'll be a problem. That should be fine. She comes back to the table and says, oh, I'm so sorry we can't do that. I said, why? She said, because today's special uses fusilli noodles and the chef does not want to move away from the specials. He needs enough pasta for the I didn't even want to hear the rest of it. I thought that was completely ridiculous that I couldn't have noodles. I've worked in a restaurant. You take the noodles, you boil them, you do what you need to do and you send it out. <laughs> You're not doing anything different. That's, that's what I'm saying about business. That's what I'm saying. They did not have to move that differently to do that in that moment. But because they did that, it caused a certain that something happened in that moment to me that I was like, ah, yeah. it okay. had an impact on you, didn't it? And, uh, you know, you're also pointing to uh, how you can use your the collectives, your customers requests and wants to right. transform the very way you do business. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It makes it bigger. It expands you in yeah. a certain way and, and it makes you a, a more powerful leader or a more powerful uh, company. So that's my end. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you, Chase. Stan. Family, before, family. You know, here you go, Stan. I want to hear Cece. She had her hand up and then she okay. put her hand down. All go right. ahead, Stan. Well, make it really, really quick. My mother had the uh, thing she used to say, as a, I hear it as a kid, and now I understand it a little more, but I think about this in terms of what you said, in terms of a company. She says, when an individual is all wrapped up in themselves, it mm. makes for a very small package. <laughs> when a company is all wrapped up in itself, it makes for a very small business. I don't care how large it actually is. Yeah. Thank you. Get that. Well, thank you for dropping the mic like that, Stan. DC, let me hear you, girl. Yes, good morning. Thank you so much for being so generous with us. Um, the style of leadership where they're getting away from themselves and getting into serving others is something very powerful. And when that is done, the manifestation of great customer service manifests. And that's what is missing from today's leadership is customer service and caring about the people that they serve and the environment that they are like not taking care of. So it is our responsibility to make sure what we have today, that includes the environment, the you know water, what have you, is protected for our children or for the future, so that this environment is healthy enough for the for the younger generations to move forward. And that is something that I think needs to be addressed. And and moving forward. Thank you so much for this topic.
it made me think, what can I do to get out of myself and serve others? So I think I'm going to do maybe a picnic for the whole community. <laughs> and then next week, I'm giving away pound cake samples. So thank you. How about that? You know, the world, life itself has a way of taking care of us when we take care of others. And it doesn't matter if you're in business for profit or if you're in business and you call it a nonprofit venture. It's all about how you look out there and find out specifically what it is people want. And when I say people, I'm not talking about people in general. You know, there's a market that you serve. You want to clearly identify who those people are. And then, man, just love them as hard as you can. And the way to love them as hard as you can is embodied in how you see them and how you see yourself with respect to them. I exist as someone who is 100% responsible for the blueprint required to achieve a better and more sustainable future for the next and uh, for the next generation and you can say my clients i hold myself and others accountable to address the global challenges we face and i am willing to rock the boat to do whatever it takes to fulfill our legacy i'm ending on this point folks i wish you a great weekend. I invite you to come be with us Monday through Friday next week. Yes, the daily huddle is a great habit to have. Go to YouTube, search for The Daily Huddle and subscribe to our channel. Invite your friends and family members to do the same thing. If you think you've got something to say and the world needs to hear it because you saying it, will create this type of legacy. I invite you to drop us a message and say, I want to appear on the Daily Huddle as a guest. And man will open our arms wide and roll out the red carpet and have you come in. So have a great weekend. And don't forget to love, laugh, stress less, eat well. Sleep well, give, move your body, and before every step, before every move, check your assumptions because you're probably relating to your assumption as if they're the truth. My name is Soral Ketan. I'm your host today. My co-host Giovanni Gonzalez is not here, and we're saying to him, I love you. Travel well. Until next week, folks. Peace and blessings, family. Take care now. Thank you. Peace and blessings.